I've just finished my first year studying undergraduate economics at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'm going to go through the course structure, the exam structure and the workload so you know what it's like to study economics at Cambridge. So starting off with the course structure. In first year, you study five papers and those are microeconomics, macroeconomics, quantitative methods in economics, social and political aspects of economics and British economic history. In terms of the year, there are three terms, Michaelmas, Lent and Easter, and there are lectures and supervisions in the first two terms, but the last term, Easter, is just for revision and exams. In terms of contact hours, the first three papers, such as microeconomics, macroeconomics and quantitative methods, have 40 hours worth of lectures over the first two terms. So microeconomics and macroeconomics have 20 lectures in the first term and then 20 lectures in the second term, whereas quantitative methods has 24 lectures in the first term, but only 16 in the second term. Whereas papers four and five, which is political and social aspects of economics and British economic history, only have 32 hours worth of lectures over the first two terms, both having 16 hours in the first term and 16 hours in the second term. In terms of supervisions, there are four supervisions per paper per term. And as terms are eight weeks long, that means one supervision every other week for each paper. And for those of you that don't know what supervisions are, they're sort of a two on one, maybe three on one with you and one or two other students and your supervisor, who is a fellow or a lecturer or a PhD student going through work and talking about the paper. And each supervision is either one hour or one and a half hours long. So in terms of how you're assessed, Papers one, two, three, and four, so everything except from British economic history, has one three hour paper at the end of the final term, and that's your only form of assessment. Paper five, on the other hand, so British economic history, consists of a two hour paper at the end of the final term, and also a four day project at the start of the final term. And this project, which you have four days to complete, is a 2,500 word essay on the Industrial Revolution. Each paper is weighted evenly, so as there are five papers, each paper is 20% of your final grade. I'll go over how each exam is specifically formatted later on in the video. So for each paper, you'll have one lecturer for first term teaching you one topic, and then another lecturer for the second term teaching you a different topic. And this applies for all five papers. So let's start with paper one, microeconomics. So first term was all about producer and consumer theory. We started off with consumer theory, looking at budget sets, preferences, and utility functions. We then moved on to optimal choice, demand, and income and substitution effects. As the term progressed, we talk about labour supply, intertemporal allocation, market demand, duality, and finally finish the consumer side with changes in welfare, so CV, EV, and CS. We then move on to producer theory, so looking at cost functions, firm supply, and industry supply. We then finish off this term looking at monopolies, and we also looked at price discrimination, first, second, and third degree. And then the second term for microeconomics was all about general equilibrium, welfare, and externalities. We started off looking at things like creator efficiencies, edge wealth boxes, competitive equilibrium, war versus law, things like that. We then moved on to trade and exchange. I looked at things specifically, such as the Robinson Crusoe economy. We then moved on to externalities, looking at property rights, taxations, tragedy of the commons, etc. And finally, this course was finished off by looking at things such as the Groves Clark schemes and other schemes when dealing with public goods. Ultimately, I much preferred term one to term two. I much preferred looking at the consumer and producer theory rather than the welfare stuff. So in terms of the microeconomics exam, as I said before, this exam was three hours long. And then this exam consisted of six compulsory short questions, and then you had to do two long questions from a choice of four. The short questions were split equally, so three were on topics from term one, and three were on topics from term two. The same was true of the long questions, so two were from term one, and two were from term two. As I said before, I preferred term one content to term two, Hence, for both my long questions, I picked the question from term one. It's ultimately up to you how you allocate your time in the exam, but it's recommended you spend an hour and a half on the short questions and then an hour and a half on the long questions. And as you do six short questions and two long questions, that means you're averaging about 15 minutes on the short question and 45 minutes on the long question. And in terms of my grade, I got 71, so a first for this exam. Now moving on to paper two, which is macroeconomics. And the first term was all about the long run. So we started off by looking at the long run model of supply and demand, and then spent quite a bit of time on the solo growth model. We looked at quite a few extensions of the solo growth model, such as accommodating for population growth. We then spent the next few lectures looking at long run unemployment, and then finished off with the money market, so money supply, money demand, and inflation. And then second term was all about the short run. So we start off by looking at the Keynesian cross and then deriving the IS curve. We then looked at monetary policy rules, the money market, and derived the LM and MP curve. We then used these to grow and derive the AD curve and the SRAS curve. We then looked at inflation expectations and applying ASAD. Up until this point, we had only been considering a closed economy. And after this point, we opened the economy up. So we looked at both the classical open economy and open economies in the short run. We then finished off this term looking at exchange rate regimes and also trade controls and capital controls. I honestly much preferred term two to term one. Term one wasn't that bad, but I find it quite simple and kind of similar to A-level content. However, the thing I did like about term one was the solo growth model. I found that quite interesting. However, term two was so good. 
and this was definitely helped by the fact that the lecturer was so good for term two. I was also lucky enough to have him as my supervisor, which definitely really helped. The thing I really liked about term two is that everything was built from the previous lectures. This was really good from helping us understand things from first principles, and it also made the course really easy to follow. And then the exam paper for macroeconomics was very similar to that of microeconomics. So again, we had six compulsory short questions, three from term one, three from term two, and then we had to do two long questions from a choice of four, two from term one, two from term two. Because I really liked the term two content, both the long questions I chose to do were from term two. And in terms of how long you spend on each question, well, it's the exact same as micro. And then in terms of the grade I got for this paper, I got a 70. And then moving on to paper three, which is quantitative methods in economics, which is basically just maths and stats. So the way this was lectured was slightly different because instead of having two lecturers for the entire course, we had four. We had first term maths lecturer, first term stats lecturer, second term maths lecturer, and second term stats lecturer. So let's start with first term maths. We started off by looking at very formal definitions of things like continuity and differentiability. We ended up with some unconstrained optimization and integrals. And then we've done some set theory, followed by some multivariate optimization. And then we finished off first term looking at some constraint optimization, looking at the Lagrangian method, and some linear algebra. And then first term stats was really just an introduction to probability and statistics. So we looked at things like probability density functions, joint functions, Bayes theorem, and a bit of hypothesis testing. As a whole, I found first term stats quite simple, but first term maths I think was a bit complicated. It's not like the things we were learning were necessarily hard, it's more the fact it was taught very formally and quite confusingly at points. And then second term maths, we started off looking at multivariate optimization again, and then moved on to difference equations and differential equations. I think this term was better than first term. The content wasn't necessarily easier, but I think it was lectured a lot better. And then second term stats was basically all linear regression. Now, I don't think the lectures are that great for this term, and in all honesty, I didn't really go to that many. However, the content I thought was really good. I really like the fact that we derived OOS from first principles, and all the things we were learning this term could really be taken back to a first principles approach. In terms of the exam format, again, three hours long, and the paper was separated into a math section and a stat section. So it's recommended you spend an hour and a half on each section. And then each section, so both the math section and the stat section, have four compulsory short questions, and then you have to do one long question from a choice of two. Now, unlike papers one and two, micro and macro, the short questions and the long questions are not split equally between the two terms. For example, this year for stats, both our long questions were on the second term of stats, none the first term. And in terms of the grade I got for this paper, I got a 72. And now moving on to paper four, political and social aspects of economics. Now, term one is all about Britain since 1945. We have a run through of all the prime ministers in the post-war period, but the main topics we talk about are the post-war consensus, Thatcher, New Labour, and a subprime mortgage crisis. And then term two is all about political and social institutions. We look at everything from political and legal institutions, education, religion, the state, financial institutions, the media, social capital, and human capital. To be honest, paper four isn't my favorite paper just because I'm not as interested in the topics as papers one, two, and three. That being said, it really wasn't too bad, and it's actually quite interesting, the stuff you're learning. In terms of how the exam is formatted, there are four questions from term one, and four questions from term two. And out of each of these four questions, you have to pick two to answer in the exam. So overall, you're answering four questions, two from term one, two from term two, and you have three hours to do all of this, so 45 minutes per essay. Now, unfortunately, I was really ill the night before and the day of this exam, so I had to skip it. Thus, I do not have a grade for this paper. And then finally, moving on to paper five, British economic history. Now, term one is all about the industrial revolution. So we look at things like the role of trade, the role of slavery, the financial revolution, the agricultural revolution, the demographic revolution, the role of the enlightenment, and the role of factor prices. And then the second term is all about the interwar period. So we start off by looking at unemployment, the causes and the statistics for the 20s and 30s. We then look at economic growth and the 1920 to 21 depression and the 1929 to 1932 depression. We then go on to look at policy. So the return to the gold standard, the effect of devaluation, and ultimately the effect of trade policies. Now, again, like paper four, I really wasn't that interested in paper five. Ultimately, I find this stuff just a little bit more boring than the other papers. So as I said before, this is assessed slightly differently to other papers. First, we had a 2,500 word project on the industrial revolution. And although I don't really like essays that much, I actually find this quite enjoyable. It was good to have four days just dedicated to this and I could do a lot of reading, a lot of research and actually come up with an answer I was pretty proud of. And now in terms of the actual paper we have to do, it was two hours long and you had to do two questions from a choice of three. And that means you're spending one hour on each essay. Ultimately, I would say I preferred term two content, so the interwar period content, over the industrial revolution content. And in this exam, I managed to achieve a 70. Now let's go on to talk about the workload. So you start off with having about 12 hours of lectures a week and then by second term, it's down to about nine or 10 hours per week. As I said before, we have a supervision per paper every two weeks. So for papers one, two, and three, so that's microeconomics, macroeconomics, and maths and stats, 
the supervisions were basically just doing questions that you'd have in the exam. And these took me around three to four hours to complete. However, papers four and five, the supervisions were writing essays. And ultimately, the reading lists for these supervisions were quite long. Now, the paper four reading lists weren't as bad, and our supervisor advised us to write the essays in 45 minutes, like we do in the exam. So ultimately, these supervisions took me around five hours. However, the history supervisions took me quite a bit longer. I'm quite a slow reader naturally, and it also takes me quite a few rereads to get things into my brain. So these supervisions would probably take me around six hours to complete. On top of just doing supervisions and attending lectures, it's also good to do your own work outside of that. So this might involve doing extra reading or extra practice on the stuff you're a bit confused by in the lectures. And it also involves things like making flashcards and going through them. So in terms of the workload, I'd say I ultimately worked around 35 to 40 hours per week. But in all honesty, I don't think I was that efficient this year. Don't get me wrong, I was happy with the grade I achieved in the end, but I could have definitely worked harder or been more productive, so I could have achieved more work in the same period of time. However, the workload definitely wasn't too much. I still had time to meet up with a friend, go to the bar, do sports, join clubs I wanted to, etc. By no means did I have to sacrifice my social life for the work. So there it is, that is my review of first year Cambridge Economics. I hope you found this video useful or informative, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below.